All right, so what spec PC do you need for Photoshop in 2019? Well, we're going to tell you exactly that. Welcome to the first episode of What the Spec. All right, welcome to the first episode of What The Spec. Um, thanks for bearing with us. You might have seen that we're trying a few different types of episodes here on the Utopia channel. Um, this is kind of format. Um, basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be answering the questions commonly asked by you, our customers. Um, we're gonna debunk some myths and we're hopefully gonna provide some really good valuable tips when you're looking for different types of systems. So as I said on the intro today we're going to be talking about what kind of PC you need to be able to run Adobe's Photoshop Suite. It's an awesome application, it's used by millions of users all over the world and you only have to click online to see that constantly people are asking what kind of PC do they need to be able to get Photoshop to run well. Well, over the next couple of minutes, we're going to be answering just that. So bear with us. We've split this into four nice and easy uh, to remember steps. The first step is going to be about processor. Then we're going to be talking about RAM, then graphics card, and then storage. Um, once we get them out of the way, we'll do a nice little summary and you will be equipped to be able to go and make sure that whatever system you buy, wherever you buy it, will be capable of delivering a sweet Photoshop experience. So let's kick this off by saying what is the best processor for Adobe Photoshop. Put simply, the i9-9900K with its 5 GHz turbo frequency kicks everything out the, out the park. It is awesome, it's a stupidly fast processor out the box and it beats all the benchmarks hands down. But it is expensive and it's not necessarily where the sweet spot for Photoshop work is. Um, our sweet spot for high-end would probably recommend the i7-9700K. Um, that sits just slightly slower than the, the, the big i9 um, up there, but it's going to deliver a really, really solid performance. Do multiple cores make for a better Photoshop performance? Good question, and yes they do, in a way. Adobe is getting better at using multiple cores all the time. We're seeing updates frequently and it is getting better but once you get to eight cores you're kind of at the limit of what Photoshop can deal with so as long as you've got up to eight cores you'll be fine any more than that you're not going to notice a difference AMD or Intel the age-old question well AMD does hit the sweet spot for price and performance for a Photoshop system we would strongly recommend in 2019 that you look at AMD's 2700X CPU it's an awesome chip it's very fast and will deliver a very smooth Photoshop performance. However, bless AMD, as good as they are, they are not quite matching Intel's single-threaded performance. And if you just want all-out speed, then as I mentioned earlier, that i9 or that i7-9700K is where the sweet spot is. We often get asked about Intel's X-series processors. Would they be any better for Photoshop? Well, not really. It's not gonna make much difference again i7, i9 is where the sweet spot in performance is. The extreme processors, if you're gonna be using other applications like Adobe Premiere, then they may, be, may well be worth considering. Um, but for pure Photoshop work, stick to the 9 series, i7 or i9. What about Xeons for Photoshop? I've heard they're super performing. Xeons are great and they're designed for ultimate reliability. Um, however, in our tests, AMD Ryzen chips, the Threadripper chips, and Intel's core series of chips are all super reliable. We just don't have RMAs or returns around those chips. So you don't really need to worry about the, the reliability in a Photoshop PC or workstation. Your Intel, basic Intel chips and AMD's Ryzen Threadripper chips have got you sorted. The other point to note is that most Xeon chips come with a lower frequency and remember we're thinking about single threaded performance for Photoshop so generally speaking Xeon chips are definitely not a good idea for a Photoshop PC. You've got all the money in the world and you're thinking dual CPU setup. You've seen the photos, they look great, you've seen people talking about them, yeah it's definitely two processors has to be better than one. Again I'm really sorry to say to break it to you but if you're only using Photoshop you do not need two processors. It will make no difference. Adobe Photoshop cannot deal with two processors. It will be using one and it will be using single threaded performance. So no, two processors is not what you want. Okay, so moving on to graphics cards. Graphics is awesome. We love graphics cards at Utopia. 
So what graphics card is the best graphics card for Adobe Photoshop? Well, the good news is you don't have to go all out for the all singing, all dancing, top end cards. Uh, Adobe Photoshop really will run well on a mid-ranged GPU. So we're talking something like a GTX 1060 as the sweet spot for Adobe Photoshop. We have tested some of the new RTX cards and really you're seeing like a 10% performance increase for a 100% price increase and um, perhaps even more. So no, GTX 1060, six gigabyte version is the sweet spot for Adobe Photoshop. So you're on a budget and you're thinking, do I need to splurge on a graphics card? Can I get away with onboard graphics? Well, yes you can. Adobe will run with onboard graphics. However, on larger files, larger projects, a dedicated GPU will make a difference, especially if you're gonna be running at higher resolutions like 4K or running multiple monitors. Okay, so I'm gonna go for a graphics card. You've decided that, how much RAM do you need? Well, as I mentioned in that previous question, six gigabytes of RAM is our sweet spot for Adobe Photoshop. That's gonna allow you to run 4K nice and smooth, and it's also gonna be able to expand to multiple monitor setups should you want it. Six gig for the win. I've heard Quadro's good, Craig. Should I get a Quadro card for my Adobe Photoshop workstation? No. Unless you're going to be working on 10-bit colour, you don't need to go to Quadro. Quadro cards are great, they have huge reliability and they also have very stable drivers. But the extra money you're going to be spending isn't going to equate to performance and the reality is that a good NVIDIA GeForce card from a reputable manufacturer is going to do you just fine. So stick with GeForce, that's where the value is for a Photoshop PC. So AMD or NVIDIA, red or green? Which one do you go for, for your dedicated graphics card? At Utopia, we are massive fans of NVIDIA. We have been for a long time. They won us over with their stability of drivers, their reliability, and their price performance. They just work. Um, so for your Photoshop workstation, we would recommend you stick with NVIDIA. However, we have re-engaged with AMD recently, and we are gonna be investigating the cards in a little bit more detail because we do think things have changed over the last year or so. Benchmark-wise, you're not gonna notice a big difference. If you've got one pre preference over the other, then the reality is that we've seen benchmarks with AMD and benchmarks with Nvidia, and it seems pretty balanced. So stick with that six gig of VRAM, and you should be okay whichever side you choose. Okay, so I've chosen an NVIDIA card. Should I go for a GTX card or should I go all out and go for RTX? My advice would be currently RTX would give you no advantage whatsoever over a GTX card. So not great value for money. However, those RT cores and the Tensor cores could well pay dividends in the future once Adobe have support. So perhaps if you're gonna be using the system for other things, gaming, then RTX would be a good buy. But if you're just looking for best performance as of February 2019, then stick with that GTX. And now on to memory. This is nice and simple. How much memory do you need for Photoshop? 16 gigabytes. If you work on average file sizes, 16 gigabytes of RAM will do you all day long. You will be perfectly happy. However, if you work on lots and lots of layers, if your files have got lots and lots of layers and you've got loads of stuff going on, big, big file sizes. So you're looking at your kind of uncompressed file sizes of up to 100 gig, then Adobe will support up to 64 gig of RAM. So if you're working on big, big files, then having 32 or 64 gig of RAM can pay dividends. So you have to look at those file sizes before you choose your RAM. And finally, moving on to storage. What kind of storage should you have in a Photoshop PC? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You've basically got three options. The first being, a mechanical drive. That's the traditional drives that we've had for many, many, many years. Mechanical drives give you great value for money for large amounts of storage, but relatively speaking, they're pretty slow these days. The second choice you've got is SSD. That's your solid state drives. They're much faster, up to 10 times faster than a mechanical drive, but you're gonna pay more per gigabyte. So they're more expensive to have lots of storage, but they're gonna be much faster. And the third option is gonna be M.2 or NVMe drives. These drives are super fast, up to three or four times faster than traditional SSD. And that's where the kind of performance enthusiast spec tends to sit. The good news is the NVMe drives are coming down in cost all the time. So we would recommend looking to stretch to an NVMe drive if you can. It will make a difference in opening your applications, turning the system on, but not a massive difference once you're actually in Photoshop. 
So what storage configuration is the best for Adobe Photoshop? You'll have seen lots and lots of options here. Um, and we're gonna go through basically the, the two main choices that you've got. For an everyday entry level setup, then one super fast SSD or NVMe drive would be the way to go. You'll be able to install Windows, you'll have Photoshop, you'll have your project files, your saved files, everything all running off that one drive and you'll be fine. But if you want a pro level setup, then what you want to consider doing is having one drive for your operating system and your application, a second drive for your project files. And if you can really push the boat out, you can have a third drive as a scratch disk, which is going to basically be a temporary storage while you're working on your files. If you have that set up, then you're going to have a sweet, smooth experience in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, let's wrap this up really quickly. Single threaded performance for CPU, high frequency is what you're looking for, not multiple cores, but up to eight cores will make a difference. Graphics card, six gig of VRAM will support multiple monitors and 4K resolutions and give you a silky smooth experience. Memory, 16 gigabytes if you're kind of entry level. If you're working on large files with multiple layers, then stretch to 32 or even 64 gig. And then finally, storage, you want at the very least an SSD, potentially NVMe drives. They will make a difference to turning that system on, opening those applications and opening any large files. And if you can stretch to it, have that project file drive and that scratch disk. That's the first ever episode of What's the spec completed? I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll hit subscribe and I hope you'll come back for more. Please join me in the comments below. Have you had a Photoshop PC that's not been what you expected? Have you, do you use Photoshop just now and think that anything that I've said isn't quite right? Share your experiences below. Let's get the conversation going. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week.